patience. Uh, we had a few technical hiccups, but hooray! I mean, that's the first of all for the band. Amazing. And then uh, you'll see we have a new uh, backdrop. We're, we're so uh, grateful uh, to the Lord and everyone who's enabled. You can carry on playing, Vanessa. It was just so beautiful. There we go. Um, who's helped us do this. So do let us know in the comments where you're joining us from. Let us know what you think of our new look. It's not finished yet. Uh, we are. There's still more for us to do. Uh, but we're really excited about all the growth that God has us in as a church. Okay, who in the room? Uh, who made a new friend today? Okay, amazing. Come on. Great. Let's stand to our feet. We're going to worship. It's always a good sign when people are chatting away. It's great. Okay, why don't we just fix our eyes on Jesus even now? If you've been with us over the last few weeks, you'll uh, be aware that the Lord has really been ramping up our times of worship. There's just been such an easy flow in the worship. We've been entering into a deeper and deeper place. Uh, last week, I was I was leading worship last week, and one of the things that amazed me was as soon as I started playing the keys, just this swell of worship came from the congregation, from you, without me saying anything. There's this, this eruption of worshiping in tongues. It was just amazing. And you know, God is looking for hunger hearts tonight. He's looking for those who are hungry and ready to enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Has anyone got anything to thank the Lord for? Okay, half the room. The rest of us, have we got anything to be thankful for today? Some people are not going to put their hand up no matter what I say. It's fine. It's fine. Um, by the end of this evening, we'll all have something th to give thanks for. And you know, uh, we actually, we have a new email address, which is testimonies at mychurch Yeah. 
tonight. We welcome you tonight. We welcome you tonight, Jesus. We welcome you tonight. We welcome you tonight. We welcome you tonight, Jesus. We welcome you tonight. Welcome you tonight. Welcome you tonight, Jesus. We welcome you tonight. We welcome you tonight. We welcome you tonight, Jesus. Because you I praise when I'm numbered. I praise when surrounded. This praise is the waters my enemies drown in. As long as I'm breathing, I've got a reason to praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. Praise 
cause you're faithful. I praise cause you're true. I praise cause there's nobody greater than you. I praise cause you're sovereign. I praise cause you reign. I praise cause you rose and defeated the grave. I praise cause you're faithful. I praise cause you're true. I praise cause there's nobody
hear the Spirit of the Lord said, I have always been in the business of doing things in a different way to the way the world expects. And the Lord says, did I not take a shepherd boy and make him a king? Did I not pluck the most obscure people on the face of the earth and make out of them a mighty nation, says the Lord. And the Lord says, did I not say that I would take the weak things of the world to shame that which is strong and the foolish things to shame the wise? And the Spirit of the Lord says, tonight I'm coming to turn things upside down in your life, says the Lord. For the Lord says, some of you have been looking for the solutions of the world rather than the solutions of the Spirit. And tonight, the Spirit of the Lord says, I want you to get rid of the solutions of the world and look to me tonight, says the Lord. And the Lord says, I want you to stop trying to figure everything out with your mind and start getting into the Spirit and inquiring of you, inquiring of me. And the Spirit of the Lord says, this week, some of you have been coming into the place of prayer and you've been saying, oh God, when you speak to me. And the Lord says, rather than placing your petitions before you, all you've been doing is waiting worrying in front of me. And the Lord says, some of you have been talking so much in the place of prayer, you've not stopped to be able to listen to what I'm saying. And the Lord says, some of you have been so fixated on the solution that you've wanted that you've not been ready to hear the solution that I have. For the Lord says, when I wanted to rescue the world, I sent a lamb. When I needed to rescue you from the pit of hell, I didn't send an invading army with chariots and horses. I sent my son who became a lamb for you. Have you not heard? Do you not know that I am he who said, if I did not even spare my son, So tonight the Lord says, open your heart and open your ears to hear the solution that I have for you tonight. Why don't you just lift, raise, sorry, put your hands in front of you. Empty handed. Some of us need to drop some things. We need to drop some solutions that we've been trying to engineer. And I just saw like a Meccano set in the spirit someone trying to construct something or that connect stuff or Lego and it's like we're trying to build a house to live out of out of toys that children use and the Lord says are you not grown up enough now to leave childish ways behind the Lord says I want to release wisdom from heaven and you're still playing with Lego The Lord says a master architect doesn't build with the things he built with that gave him the passion to build when he was a kid. And some of you, I felt like in the spirit, the Lord was saying, you're still trying to do the same things the same way when you first got saved. As the apostle Paul says, by now you should have moved on from milk. So just look in the spirit, what's in your hands? What are the things that you've been trying to build? You've been trying to make, and it's not that the Lord doesn't like your efforts, it's just he has a better way. So tonight, God, we 
we repent, God, of building out of wood and straw and stubble. Lord, we want to build with things that are eternal, God. So, Father, even now, Lord, all across this place, would you just start to lift off people the heaviness, the weight of all of that, and loose, even now, strategies and solutions from heaven. Jesus, you're not withholding anything from us. Some of us need to just repent of believing that God is holding out on us. If he sent Jesus, he's certainly not going to withhold from you what you need. Jesus said, if your father who is in heaven knows how to clothe the lily of the valley and feed the bird, does he not know how to look after you? So Father, we just repent of our small thinking now. We magnify you, God, the lamb. Worship the Lamb who made a way for you. Just lift him high. magnify you all across this place, God, and online. We thank you, Jesus, that everything we have need of is in you. All healing, all deliverance, all freedom, God. Lord, every provision, everything that you have ever, uh, everything that we have ever had need of is found in you. I thank you that you are not uh, shortchanging us tonight. And I just heard the Lord say that some people really need to get rid of that mindset of feeling like God has shortchanged you in some way. Yeah, you might be going through a storm. You might be going through a, a shaking season. But the Lord is not shortchanging you. The Lord is not shortchanging you. And I saw us change our direction. It's like I saw like a weather vane change when the weather blows. And I felt like there are some people who whenever the season changes, whatever happens, some of you is minute by minute, day by day, you just change according to your feelings. You change your view of God according to whatever's going on for you at that very moment. You're blown around by the wind. And the Lord is saying, fix your eyes on me tonight. The Lord says, this is not a season to be blown about by every wind that comes along. This is not a season. Dr. Sharon was uh, speaking to us last week about not being governed by our emotions. Our emotions are good, but not when they lead us. If you know that's you, just, just lift your hand to the Lord right now. If you know that your emotions have been getting the better of you this week, 
And it's, 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 I'm not saying it's easy. But Father, right now, you online as well, you might just want to type, that's me. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we take authority over our emotions. You might want to lay a hand on your head even now and say, I take authority over my emotions. Don't look at other people. You just look at Jesus right now. That's the point. Look at him, not everyone else. (laughs) Fix your eyes on him. Say this, I take authority over my emotions. I fix my eyes on Jesus. I lift my head from things below to where Christ is seated in heavenly places. Now just let it happen. The more you can activate the eyes of your spirit to see what is happening now. It's like I see pieces of string strewn all over the place being gathered up. It's like they're scattered bits of string. And as you're commanding your emotions to come into order and subjection to your will, it's like the Spirit of God is helping weave them together into something beautiful, into a beautiful, strong tapestry that has order. And I feel like some of you Your emotions have been so disordered that you haven't been able to think straight. And some of you have been saying, God, I need to know which direction to go. But the emotions have meant you can't see the tapestry that the Lord is weaving out of your life. So right now, in the name of Jesus, I just speak clarity of sight in the spirit that you would be able to see what the Lord is doing in your life, even as you partner with him to gather your emotions together. And this is the thing. It has to be a partnership. The the, the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. Your emotions are subject to you. I break off you now the lie that says that your emotions are going to determine everything about you. I feel like some of you even have been to the doctor and they've just said to you, well, this is just the way it is. You're just going to have anxiety. You're just going to have depression and you're going to have to live with it. I break that now in the name of Jesus. That's a lie from the pit of hell. And right now over this company of people here and online, I decree that we are a company of people who govern our emotions, who govern our atmosphere, who govern our sphere of influence in the name of Jesus. We are not going to be swayed by every wind that comes along. Say amen if you're excited about that. Say amen louder if you believe it. Come on. Turn to your neighbor and say you were born to govern. Turn to your other neighbor and tell them you were born to rule and reign with Christ. Turn to your other neighbor and say you're the head and not the tail. Find another neighbor and tell them you're above and not below. Find another neighbor and tell them you're the one who will lend and not the one who will borrow. Listen, people, this is the inheritance of the people of God. If it was good enough for the children of Abraham, it's good enough for us. Amen. It's time we start living like it. Amen. Would you just uh, thank the worship team for me, Vanessa, and the amazing worship team. Bless you guys. Vanessa has a new toy as well, her beautiful new keyboard, so she's very, very excited about that. Um, I'm going to invite Sean and Sherilyn up. They're going to come and uh, share with us now. We just honor the worship team. Wasn't that good this evening? Come on, we can do better than that. Come on. That sounded amazing, and it's uh, it's so good. Can you not just tell the difference in the sound as well? Can anyone else? Is that just me? Could anyone else hear this? Did it not sound good? Amen. Amen. It does look good. It does look good. Well, we're going to extend our worship now um, with our giving and our generosity. Um, And um, I was spending some time thinking about what the Lord wanted to share as it pertains to our giving and our generosity in our hearts. And 
Um, I had the verse come up to me in the book of Hebrews 11. I'll read it really quick. I'm sure we're really familiar with the, um, the story of Cain and Abel, but this particular verse says, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and through it, being dead still speaks. There's another translation that says, Abel brought a better sacrifice to God than Cain. It was what he believed, not what he brought. That made the difference. And so it lines perfectly with what Pastor Rob was sharing about. It's time to shift our mindsets. It's time for us to step into a new frame, a new mindset, because it's not necessarily just what we give, but it's how we give and how we think. And how we give is linked to our heart, because the Bible says in Romans 10, um, with the heart man believes. And so God links our worship. Isn't it interesting how he links our worship to our giving, to our heart? He says, where your treasure is, there is your heart. Because the, 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 the three things are synonymous. There is something that God wants from us, not money. Hello, somebody. We need money, but not money. <laughs> we need money, but not money. Everyone's gone quiet. How many of us know... It's something that we do. It's an expression in how we speak, how we are towards our spouse, how we honor our leaders and our pastors, how we conversate with our neighbors. It's all part of worship. It's all unto God. So for those of you who need an envelope, it's on your seat. Um, please, I just got a message from Joe earlier on today. If you are a tax giver, even if you've not filled it out yet or you're not giving today, please, please, please fill in all of your details on this envelope here so that she can get to work in the office. Is that okay? Good. Excellent. Yeah, I got the same message from Peter. She said, listen, when you go up, make sure you tell everybody to fill out their gift aid. Make sure you tick the gift aid box. So gift aid for all of, the, um, for all of those that, of you that and sign. And I can see Greg signing away. Um, so gift aid, make sure you tick the box. Make sure you tick that you are happy for gift aid to be given continuously because it really helps the office it's because sometimes we tick one week and then we don't tick other weeks and it creates a little bit of um, extra work on the admin side. So please make sure we, we, um, we tick those boxes. And just make sure as you, as you begin to hold your seat, we're going to speak over our, our, our seeds this evening. Just... Online. Yeah, there's going to be a QR code online as well. There's, that should be up. Um, I really want us to change our, our, our mindset, as Pastor Rob was just saying. We have to believe. Remember, th th 
those that come to God must believe that he is a rewarder. Hello, someone. He is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So God is, God is, he's real, he's alive, and he wants to, to reward us in every area when we diligently seek him. We have to, we have to seek God this year it, like we've never sought him before in every area of our lives, in, with every fiber of our being. We have to, to make sure we him when let's come to Jesus. See mirror own lives. We we look in different areas and we want a breakthrough. And Jesus says, unless someone is born again, unless they change the way they think, they won't see the kingdom. So we're going to see God this year in such a big way as we begin to push through and stretch ourselves in all these different areas. So everyone on your feet. Oh, and also, just to quickly add, if you are giving by card, a wonderful steward is out there for you to head out there yeah. and to give by card also. Yeah. Amen. All right, let's let's hold our envelopes, our phones, um, anything which represents our giving, because we are a generous church. Amen. And the Lord loves cheerful givers. Amen. So can we make a joyful noise? Amen. Now you can do better than that. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. Can we make a joyful noise? All right. Okay, let's pray over our seeds. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege of being able to partner with heaven, Lord, as we give, Lord, and we can see you move, Lord, in such profound ways in this life and in eternity. Thank you, Lord, that, Lord, even as we stand here, we are the byproduct of, of, of people's seeds, directly and indirectly. And as we continue that momentum, Lord, as we continue, Lord, we thank you, Father, that these seeds, these pounds are on assignment, Father, to to bring forth your kingdom, Father, that your kingdom would come and your will would be done, Father. Where there are those in need, Father, you are the Lord that says, he who gave his only begotten son, how much will you not give more freely to those, Lord? How how much will you not withhold anything from those who believe, Father? You give lavishly. You give freely, Father. You are the God that can create springs of water in the wilderness. You can make the impossible possible. You can bring forth things from the future into our today because you're a good God. So, Lord, today we declare you are good. We change our mindsets. We change, the, we change our thinking from the world system, Father, and we partner with heaven, Father, for breakthrough, Father, in this nation, in this church, and in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Let's give our seeds. Amen. Hallelujah. Stewards, please go around and um, let's put our, our seeds in the, um, in the buckets. You can prophetically tap your phone in the bucket. Come on, we have wireless payments now as well. Um, don't forget to really give, though, <laughs> like online. A <laughs> couple of announcements we have. Yes, we have got... Who was here for Tabernacle last time? It was amazing, wasn't it? For those of you who wasn't here, I suggest you come this week, this sat- this Sunday, the 28th of April, where we're going to have our special guest worship leader, Steve Teb, and our very own Pastor Rob in the house, who are going to be leading worship next week. Oh, there we go. There they are. Lovely faces up there. <laughs> and also on the, what's the date on the thing for the next one? The 12th of May. Yeah. We will have. So we have Tabernacle coming up on the 28th of April um, with Steve Teb, amen. Such an honor and such a blessing to have him. And he's a, he's a really busy man, so we are really privileged to have him come um, and worship with us and lead worship on that day. Um, we also have Tabernacle, take, please take note of this, on the 12th of May. Okay, we're going to be partnering with The Send. Anybody heard of The Send? Lou Ingle. Is this, work, is this microphone working, Pastor? <laughs> Anybody heard of Lou Ingle? Yes. All right, that's more like it. So we're going to be partnering with the Send on the 12th of May. It's going to be a really, really powerful event. God is showing up. 
invite your friends, invite your neighbors, inv invite your boss. It's going to be powerful, right? Um, and that's going to be the next tabernacle on the 12th of May. Amen. Um, we do have the testimonies email. Can you see that? Anybody have a testimony? Just Paul? Anyone else? Yeah, me see. Has God done anything for anyone? Okay. <laughs> Anybody scared we're going to pull them up? Anybody want to come up, Seb? <laughs> please, 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 I encourage you. This is one of the ways we overcome. We know the scripture. It says that we, o we overcame by the blood of the lamb and the word of his testimony. And there is something which triggers. Sometimes we even need to remember that ourselves, right? When we're, when we're in the hustle and bustle of life and things are, are, are tough and challenging, sometimes we can look back on the goodness and the faithfulness of God and see his fingerprints in our lives. And it does something when, when somebody stands and just shares their journey and, and shares their breakthrough. It, 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 it creates that, that trigger of faith to arise. So I encourage you to email in your testimonies um, to that website. Just want to make sure I'm not forgetting anything else before we have prayer on Tuesday. Amen. It's prayer and fasting this Tuesday. It's powerful. I, I, uh, the link is up there. Please, 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 if you haven't been part of it or, or maybe you have, I know it's, um, it's early, but it's worth it. Amen. If you seek the Lord early, you'll find him. I'm saying that to myself as well because... Uh, with the kids, sometimes it, it is a real challenge, but there is something that happens when we set the Lord before us at the beginning of our day, and Yemisi and the prayer leaders do such a fantastic job, so that's on Tuesday morning, 6 a.m., um, I think that's it, I believe, can we welcome Pastor Rob up to the stage, our very own. Amen. Can we all stand to our feet and just point our hands <laughs> towards our very own Pastor Rob? Our very own Pastor Rob, amen? <laughs> Pastor and prophet. <laughs> okay, let's stretch our hands towards um, Pastor Rob. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for such an honorable, integrous, wise, man of God, a man of discernment, a man after your own heart, someone, Father, who cares for your people, Lord. We thank you that, Lord, as he's here today, your anointing oil would run over him, Father, from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet, that anointing which removes the burden and destroys the yoke, Father. We thank you, like Jeremiah, Lord, that the word of God in his mouth will be like a fire, like the hammer which breaks the rock into pieces, Father. We thank you that things shift, Father, because you use him as a vessel, as a chosen vessel, Father. We thank you, Father, that every distraction, every plan of the enemy, every burden, Father, sent out to dis delay or distract or to, to bring any form of restriction, we break off right now in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father, for that which you've placed in him, Father, Lord. And we stir up that gift, Father, and we just thank you, Father, for just the breakout, Lord, of your goodness, Father, from his mouth, Lord, today, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Thanks, Sean and Sherilyn. So appreciate you guys. Well, good evening, everyone. Welcome to those of you joining us online. If you've uh, joined since the beginning of the service, my name is Rob. I'm the uh, senior pastor here, and it's uh, my joy to welcome you uh, to my church. It's not called my church because it's my church or it's your church. Uh, for those of you who've never been here before, in Matthew 16, 18, Jesus said, On this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And uh, we really are a church who believes in overcoming. Amen? We believe that the gates of hell will not prevail against this church or any other church in Jesus' name. We're not having any of that nonsense. And uh, today, uh, Sean's already pinched uh, one of my at least one of my scriptures. That's, that's what it is when you give someone a microphone who has lots of the Word of God in them. It just flows out of them. Amen? Amen? 
Okay, we're going to have to wake up a bit tonight. It's, it's, it's true, isn't it? Is anyone feeling a bit lethargic? Okay, stand to your feet. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just take authority over every spirit of lethargy, Father God. Everything of fatigue and tiredness right now in Jesus' name. And we command it to break now. Break now. Some of you need to start shaking it off. Shake off the heaviness right now. Shake off the lethargy. You know, this isn't, we're not an audience, we're an army. Amen. So, Father God, right now, Lord, we choose to come and participate tonight. Lord, we haven't come to spectate. And so, Father, we shake off everything that would cause us to be lethargic even now in Jesus' name. And I speak to every spirit of heaviness, get off the people of God right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, oh, you got that one right. Yeah, good. Amen. Amen. Take a seat. And, you know, I've come with a word of encouragement. Is it me or is it just really loud or is it just just so much better? I don't know. I love it, but I'm just, it's up to you. You're sat right next to the speaker. It's good. Is it good? Okay. No, I like it. I'm enjoying it. Okay. (laughs) Okay. There's a generational thing going on here. Um, No, I was going to say, the young ones over here. So... Um, I'm coming with a word of encouragement today, so that should uh, gladden your heart right away. Um, It's a word to strengthen you, a word to ignite you and catalyze you in this season. And it's a word to give you strategy in these days of shaking. Anyone feeling the shaking right now? It doesn't take us long to see that there is shaking in the world. We watch the news and we can see shaking on a global stage. We can see it uh, in wars and rumors of wars. We see the warmongering going on around the world. We see economic systems around the world groaning and breaking. We see uh, trade routes uh, that are in disarray at the moment. You only have to go to the supermarket or a store or try to order something and someone will tell you we can't get hold of it right now, or there's a 12-week delay on that because it's stuck in the Suez Canal, or the Houthi rebels have fired a missile at the ship that it was on and it sunk. I don't know what it is, but there are things that are happening on a global stage that are affecting you and me right now. We only have to remember back to a couple of years ago, one man decides that he wants a bit of land and suddenly your gas bill doubles. There is shaking. We can look at it in our nation and lots of nations around the world as this year we know that more people are going to the polls this year to vote for a new leader than any other time in history. It's a completely unprecedented time and completely unplanned, maybe except for in the plan of God. Amen. And he is the one who understands what is happening. Uh, But what happens when these big things start to shake is they start to cause us to shake in our personal lives as well. A big thing happens out there, but it starts to cascade down and eventually it comes to us and we start to feel that shaking. Maybe it starts to affect us, like I already said, in our bills. Maybe it affects us in our workplace. Maybe it affects you're one of these people like myself is on an NHS waiting list for months and months or maybe years and years. And it starts to cause a shaking to come into your life in different ways. Uh, Maybe it's in your relationships. But here is the thing. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me earlier uh, this week about all of this shaking and about His plans in the midst of this. So just lift your hands all across this room uh, and receive this word. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say this. In this season, I'm coming to shake all that can be shaken. That I might establish you my unshakable kingdom, says the Lord. And I'm refining and strength to bring you to a place where you, you cannot be shaken, where you look down and can see that your feet are firmly planted on the rock of Jesus Christ, and where you know and experience the power and authority of being part of my unshakable kingdom, says the Lord. For I am building an immovable confidence on the inside of you, where you can speak to the storms and they will cease, where you can speak to the sickness and it will be healed, where you can speak 
to the demons and they shall flee. And where you will speak destiny over nations and they will align. For this is the purpose I had in mind when I caused you to be born for such a time as this, says the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. Who wants to be part of that unshakable kingdom, part of that, have that immovable confidence on the inside of them? And this is what the Lord wants to do tonight, is to speak into the midst of your being so that you would have that confidence, that you would know that you're part of that overcoming kingdom. You see, God is giving keys of the kingdom in this season. And those keys are weapons to fight so that the gates of hell shall not prevail. Remember, we're a church born out of that Matthew 16, 18. On this rock I shall build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. That's not unique to the church that meets in this area or watches online. That should be the testimony and declaration of every church. Yes, some of you are awake. And you see, these are the days of the kingdom. Ever since Jesus arrived on the scene after being baptized, it says he went around proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand, Jesus said. And so ever since that time, we have been living in the days of the kingdom of God. And you know, the kingdom of God, or synonymous with the kingdom of heaven, means this. It's, the, it's heaven invading earth. Everyone say, invade. You can do the action. Invade. It's heaven invading earth and subduing darkness, setting captives free, ready for the return of the king through you and me. The kingdom of God coming is not something that happens all around about us just simply by magic. It isn't just you going in Jesus' name, oh, the kingdom of God come. No, it's you understanding that the kingdom of God is meant to come through you. (laughs) If you don't understand that you have a crucial part in this, you'll be a casualty. The enemy will shake you rather than you shaking him. Because if the kingdom of God is unshakable, it means something else has to shake. And listen, you amazing prophetic people, you not only get to be the ones who discern it and sense the times and the seasons and what is happening around about you, you get to be the ones who hear from God and have a solution everywhere you go so that every devil you meet shakes and quakes when you walk in the room. And you know, we're not left without training or weapons. One, uh, 2 Corinthians 10 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. And this word weapons is a military term that is meant to give us unction. Because it doesn't just mean a sword in your hand that you can stab someone with or cut someone's head off. It literally means a deliberate and intentional offensive strategy. Your weapon is a strategy, as well as the gifts of the Spirit, as well as uh, uh, the ways that God has given us to pray. It's also the ability to have a strategy in any given circumstance. You're not going to be successful if you just wander through life without a plan, without a strategy. Those are the people who lie on their deathbed going, I wish I'd done more with my life. Don't let that be you. Have a plan, have a purpose, and it's not simply for you to come and form a queue at the end of the service and wait for a prophet to give you a word that says, this is your purpose. No, you have to go to the Lord yourself to find it. You have to go to Him and hear for yourself so that there is an immovable thing on the inside of you that says, I know what I'm for. Tell your neighbor, it's time to get off the back foot. Oh, you can do better than that. Tell your neighbor, it's time to get off the back foot. (laughs) Find another neighbor. Tell them, it's time to be strategic, not passive. I see some people wagging their finger. Get your finger out. Wag it again. It's time to be strategic, not passive. 
And so tonight I want to expose uh, some strategies of the enemy that he's wanting to exploit in this season to bring shaking. And I want to share with you some strategies and intentionally offensive ways, uh, keys that God is giving to defeat the enemy. Repeat after me. I am meant to be deliberately offensive. Don't mix that up with being obnoxious. That's different. So hold on. And you know, I saw in the spirit, I, as I was uh, praying, I was seeing in the spirit, and I saw the enemy release chariots across the earth. And I don't know if you've seen Ben-Hur, but in Ben-Hur, when the chariots, or a gladiator, when the chariots are rumbling around the Colosseum, they create a lot of noise. You know, the floor of the Colosseum was, was wooden. It was hollow. There was a great space underneath. So as the chariots came out, it would have sounded like thunder. And the people in the Colosseum would have like heard this almighty sound of all these chariots and horses racing around. It would have been an intimidating sound, especially if you were one of the poor people in the middle where the, uh, the gladiators were coming out on their chariots coming to get you. The sound would have been terrifying. And you know, the thing is this, it's just sound. And in this season, I saw that the enemy was trying to create noise to intimidate and get you to shake when there was nothing to shake at. Because if the enemy can get enough people to shake, he can get them to shake at each other. He can create conflict through the fear that he induces. And we're not having any of that nonsense. And so what are some of the weapons of the enemy and what are God's keys and weapons in response? So some are looking at the shaking that's happening in the world at the moment and they're either lulled into complacency and bear with me in this or, and others are in a place of overwhelm. And you think, how on earth could the shaking cause me to become complacent very easily? Complacency and Overwhelm in this context can have the same outcome. And the eight outcomes are these. Complacency is when you look at it and go, well, it's not my fight. It's someone else's fight. I'm going to leave the battle to someone else. And I think at one point or other in our lives, we can all confess that we've done that. We've looked the other way and we've let someone else pick up the fight. It is no good you sending out prayer requests saying, people, will you pray for me? I'm going through a tough time. When you can't be bothered to pray yourself. Don't be complacent. Amen, Rosalind. Now, we all go through, there are times where we can barely lift our head off the pillow. I understand that. But too many of us come to the pastor for a prayer and we haven't prayed. We come for a prophetic word and we've done nothing already. Don't form a cue for a prophetic word for a situation you haven't prayed about. Because the word out of the prophet's mouth will give you, go pray. I'm being slightly facetious, but it's true. Because we're, we like our comfort. It's not my battle. I'm going to stay in a position of comfort. Why should I bother? Overwhelm. Guess what overwhelm does? Overwhelm goes, oh my gosh, I can't do anything about it, so I'm going to run for a place of comfort. Both run to a comfort zone. Maybe if I ignore it, it'll be over. That's what the comfort zone says. I'll shut my eyes. I'll be like an ostrich and put my head in the sand. Both turn to comfort and familiar for security in times of shaking. Did you hear that? The complacent and the overwhelmed turn to places of comfort for security. Comfort isn't going to give you security. Jesus gives you security. Where do we see this? King David in 2 Samuel 18, it says, In the spring when kings go to war, David stayed in his comfortable palace. And the place, is, the place of comfort is a dangerous place. We call it a comfort zone. It should be called a danger zone. Let me say that again. Your comfort zone is a danger zone. What happened to David? We know he looks out of his window and he's in his boredom he sees Bathsheba bathing on the roof. And we all know the story. He ends up having an affair with her. She gets pregnant and he kills, his, kills her husband. If you think that the enemy is going to leave you alone just because you're in your comfort zone, you are out of your mind. 
He's going to come for you whether you like it or not. And he's either going to come for you if you think you can just, well, if I don't take the battle to the enemy, the enemy won't bring the battle to me. That is foolishness. Because the enemy will present a window before you and on the roof out there will be a Bathsheba. What's your Bathsheba? What's your window? Is it your TV? Is it your phone? Is it your fridge? I'm not even joking. Maybe it's a combination of those. Watching Netflix while stuffing your face and doom scrolling on your phone at the same time. Don't tell me you haven't done it. Your comfort zone because you can't be bothered to face it or because you can't be bothered to engage in the battle because it's someone else's. King David had the luxury of sending out generals on his behalf. Don't be messaging the generals asking them to pray when you're sat at home stuffing your face. Because here's the thing. If you think that the enemy won't leave you alone, you are out of your mind, as I said. And you know, not all of these things in and of themselves are wrong, but when they become a false comfort, when we turn to food, TV, our phone, or whatever we find on those devices, rather than turning to Jesus to fill the need on the inside of us, rather than coming to Him with our shakings, rather than coming to Him with the tremblings on the inside of us, then we'll look to fill that space with any of these things. That's when they become distractions, false comforts, and addictions. Did you know that the the word entertainment, if we break the word da- entertainment down into its Latin components, entertainment, it means this, to enter into the mind so as to possess or control. Your entertainments often have been set before you as a Bathsheba to enter into your mind to possess or control you. And the enemy is seeking to control your mind. Why does the apostle say, be transformed by the renewing of your mind? We have to repent, metanoia, change the way that we think so that we're thinking like the army of God and not like couch potatoes who are easy picking for the enemy. You know, the enemy can deal with millions of people at once just by getting them to sit in front of their TV and watch rubbish or scroll and get their news from ridiculous social media rather than engaging their spirit and their mind in order to hear what the Spirit of God is saying about something and be able to articulate it. And you know, maybe you're like David tonight. Maybe you've come tonight and you know that you've actually got yourself in a pickle with your comforts. Maybe tonight you know that it's gone from just something that fills a space. Maybe it's gone from just being a comfort zone to actually now going to something that is controlling you. Maybe it's an addiction. It's gone from being just a little bit of a snack here and there to eat the whole fridge in one go every time. I'm using that as an example because there are other examples that you can think of. Uh, But you see, the thing is this. Those things then become a prison. Our comfort zone, remember I said it's a danger zone, now becomes a prison. But the thing is this. God is coming tonight to shake you free from your prison. Or from the prisons that the enemy has got you into. Remember I said this is a season of shaking. We cannot allow the shakings to push us into the danger zone that then pushes us into the prison. That's the enemy's strategy. But the Lord's strategy is always to bring you into a place of deliverance. Remember uh, the apostle Paul and Silas when they're in the jail in Acts 16. It says this, about midnight... Why is that important? About midnight, in the darkest part of the night, we also know that midnight to 3 a.m. is also when the witches, the warlocks, and all the weirdos do all of their most dastardly things. That's when they're trying to put curses on you and trying to do all these kinds of things to manipulate and damage uh, at those times. But it's at midnight that Paul and Silas, it says they were praying and singing in the prison. And it says this, all the other prisoners were listening. 
There is a breakthrough that God wants to bring in your life, but he doesn't want to do it in secret. He wants you to be in a place where other people see the breakthrough happen so they can attribute it to God and not some self-help program. It says, at that moment, there was a great earthquake. Not just a little one, a great earthquake. And immediately, all the doors of the prison were open and all of their bonds fell off. Here's the thing. The, when God shakes you out of your prison, it is never just for you. It's so that everyone else around about you would enter into a place of freedom and liberty. It is so that you have a testimony to share with others that brings them out of their dungeon. You see, because even the jailer and his family were saved. Even those who were being used by the devil to keep uh, Paul and Silas in bondage ended up being rescued out of the clutches of the devil. And you may think that there are some people in your life who are such an antagonist, who are so persecuting you that God could never save them. But your deliverance and your freedom is for them as well. You see, you're a king. You're a king. You're a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And we as kings in the holy, uh, as the holy nation of God are called to go out to battle. And this springtime, as the enemy is releasing his chariots to rumble around the earth and cause intimidation and problems, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, Go out to meet him on the battlefield. Do not stay in your comfort zone because it will be your danger zone. So our first set of keys of the kingdom, we need to recognize that we're called to battle. We need to recognize that a comfort zone is a danger zone. And we need to recognize that the entertainments offered to us are actually entrapments. That they are ensnarements of the enemy to control and poison your mind. So if we recognize that, we are, we are already on our way to winning. And so what are the other keys here? Singing and play, praying, even in the place of captivity. Even in the place of when it's darkest and most difficult, lift your voice. God gave you a voice. There is power in your voice. At the moment, I'm teaching one of my groups. I'm teaching them about this very passage about the midnight hour. You know, there is a prophetic declaration. Remember, Paul is the one who later wrote, said, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, or psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. This is the man who wrote from dungeons, not just here, but in Rome. He wrote from prisons in many different places. This is a man who understood what it meant to worship and pray from a place of absolute captivity. What's your excuse? What's my excuse? So maybe it's time for you and I to fast something in order to recalibrate. Maybe it's time for us to fast social media or TV or popcorn or whatever it is. Maybe it's time for a full fast on food. I don't know what it is. But sometimes the only thing that will break something is by saying to God, I'm really serious. So I'm going to fast it for a season. I'm going to go cold turkey on this, God, for a season. I'm going to get out of this danger zone and I'm going to get back out on the battlefield. Because the battlefield is the safest place for you to be. Some of you don't like that. The battlefield is the safest place to be. Why? Because the safest place to be is where exactly where God wants you at any given time. The most dangerous place to be is running away from it. We're called to run into the battle, not away from it. So, stand to your feet. We're going to break some bondages. We're going to see some prison doors opened even now. Just start praying in the Spirit. That's it. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. There's not one person who doesn't need more freedom in some area of their life. There isn't not, there's not one person who doesn't have a comfort zone that they need to be shaken out of tonight. You're never going to be effective for the kingdom of God while you live in a comfort zone. There's no growth in a comfort zone. That's it. Pray. Pray. Lift your voice. Kurande beshende, rinda masanda, runde yala masanda. Pray like you want to shake the camp of the enemy. 
Kurindia Masanda, Rembe Bebere Basanda, Yetio Ron Karabashende, Ronde Yalazi, keep praying. Father, in the name of Jesus, for every one of these who's found themselves in a place of complacency, I break them free from it now in the name of Jesus. Father, for each one of these who's found themselves in a place of feeling overwhelmed, Lord, I break that overwhelm off them even now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I pray that you would shock us out of our comfort zones even now. Shock us out of our comfort zones, oh God, in Jesus' name. Father, we say no to complacency. We say no to overwhelm. Just yell this with me. We say no to complacency. Come on, and again, we say no to complacency. We say no to overwhelm. We say no to comfort zones. We say we will run into the battle. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Give the Lord a shout as you take a seat. So the first area was that through the shaking, the enemy is trying to get us into a place of complacency or into a place of feeling overwhelmed. The other area I saw that the enemy was trying to bring a shaking was through the use of threat. Threat of consequences for nations rising against each other. What will happen to my nation if this nation does that? How will my nation respond to? And we look at the news and we see our politicians trying to work out how should we respond to Gaza? How should we respond to Israel? How should we respond to Iran? How should we respond to the Houthis? How should we respond to Vladimir Putin? How should we respond to China? How should we, how, how, how? And it starts, that level of threat starts to percolate down as well. But you see, the one I heard the Lord speak really clearly was that the enemy was trying, particularly in this nation and the nations of the West, was the enemy was using the weapon of the threat of litigation. What do I mean? Being threatened with court, being taken to court or prosecuted. We only have to look to Scotland to see the ridiculous law that they passed a couple of weeks ago saying that if you dare say anything about someone who has some fantastical idea about who they are, then you could be sent to prison for seven years. If I'd said that in Scotland, I could have been sent to prison for saying it under this new ridiculous legislation. And it's the threat of that, the shaking that comes with the fear of threat. Threat of accusation. And we see this with politicians, both in the United Kingdom and in America and other places, rising up with a finger, accusing each other the whole time. And then phoning the police and saying, you've got to investigate them. You've got to investigate them. They're all doing it. It's all all sides. It's not just one. They're all saying, we've got to get the law involved. We've got to get the law involved. We've got to prosecute. No longer is it about discourse and debate. Now it's about let's find everything we can on someone and then not just expose them in the uh, media, which is what they did before. Now let's see if we can get them prosecuted as well. Because if we can take one of them down, we'll take the whole lot of them down. And you see, this threat is rising in the earth, this threat of accusation. And it's an intimidation of the enemy. And it comes against the people of God because it's like, if I can get a really high profile case on the news of a Christian being sent to prison or prosecuted or sued for something, they'll all shut up. They'll all back off. They'll all be too afraid to come against me. That's the enemy's tactic. We're going the other way, people. We are going the other way. Remember what the, 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 the early church said in Acts 2 or 3, I think it is. It says, hear their threats, O Lord, and arise with mighty power. You see, we have to remember that our God is a God of war. His name is El Gabor, the God of war. And you have the ability to rouse him to fight on your behalf. We know the scripture that says the battle is not ours, it's the Lord. Yes, it is, but he still wants partnership. 
And he's not going to do it for you. He's going to do it through you. And so when someone else uh, threatens you or tries to, the enemy tries to intimidate you with threat, what's it trying to do? It robs you of peace and it causes you to have lots of questions in your mind. So before you go to say something, you question yourself. Before you go to do something, you question yourself. Oh, can I wear my cross around my neck when I go to work? Can I speak to this person at work and pray for them? Can I do this? So you end up bound in a cycle of questions. And your peace is gone because you know God has told you to do something. And at the same time, the lies of the enemy have whipped you up into such a state that you find you can't do it. It paralysis. Yet Revelation 12 says what? Day and night, the enemy accuses them before God. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord say this, some, this has got so intense for that even when you come to pray, all you hear is the accusations of the enemy when you're in the place of prayer. All you hear is everything you've done wrong. All you hear is every every area that you've failed in. All you hear is all of the stuff from the past. And I saw in this morning in the spirit where I was praying, I saw a river. And I saw along the river banks, there were these way markers. You know those stone way markers that you still find mile markers around London and different places. On one side, it says like 12 miles to uh, St. Albans or whatever it is. And on the other side, it will say 20 miles to London. And the Lord says this, some of you, as you travel through life, are facing backwards. So all you see is the reminder on the backside of the stone of where you've come from. But rather than it being an encouragement, you're looking at what your life was, rather than reading the milestone on the front where the Lord is celebrating where you're going. It is time to change our perspective because the enemy is trying to accuse you even before God. But you see, the thing is this, if we read the whole of that scripture, it says this, now the salvation and power and kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have, for the accuser of the brethren has been thrown down. Everyone say, thrown down. Now, like you believe it, thrown down. You know, our adversary is a defeated adversary. He's not a powerful adversary. He's a defeated adversary. It is not an equal battle between light and darkness. This is not a yin-yang nonsense thing. This is the almighty God and an itty-bitty devil who uses smoke and mirrors and sends out his chariots to rumble and make so much noise that you think that he's more powerful than he is. And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony, for they love not their lives even unto death. You know, this word testimony is a declaration by a witness with authority of firsthand experience and knowledge. You and I have authority because we are firsthand witnesses to the power of the blood of Jesus to rescue us out of the dominion of darkness and establish us in the kingdom of his beloved son. What other form of authority do you need? All of us have a testimony because when the Lord took us out of the dominion of darkness by the blood of his son and placed us into the glorious kingdom of our God, he placed us into an unshakable kingdom. And so your testimony of how God delivered you, of healed you, how he gave you prophetic words and fulfillments, all of these become mighty weapons as you deliberately and offensively strategically wield them. Let me give you a short illustration. Emperor Flavian in the first century AD after Jesus uh, ascended into heaven, he was an instrument of Satan used to persecute the church as many emperors after him were. They persecuted the church because the church was a threat to Rome. 
at the time, there was a man called Ignatius of uh, Antioch. You remember that Paul talks about the church of Antioch. This is the most amazing apostolic church. It's the place where Christians were first given the name Little Anointed Ones, Christians. Staggering, wonderful church. St. Ignatius of, uh, of um, Antioch was one of, uh, he was the bishop there at the time. And at the time, there were 40,000 Christians in the Roman Empire. That's less than 0.1% of the Roman Empire were Christians. And the emperor was terrified of them. And he said, I've got to make an example of this man. And so he marched him from Alexandria in Egypt all the way round the Mediterranean and took him to Rome and put him in the middle of the Colosseum. And when the lions were initially loosed against him, they lay down. They didn't come. But then all of a sudden, they did. They lunged for him. But he just stood there with dignity. He refused to allow his disciples to try and rescue him. He said, no, I must do this because it's going to be more effective for the kingdom of God than if I live. Less than 0.1%, 40,000 Christians across the whole 200 million square miles of the Roman Empire when St. Ignatius died. Within just 150 years of his death, there were 6 million Christians in the Roman Empire. No social media, no uh, motorized transport. It had spread across the entire Roman Empire, 6 million out of 50 million in just 150 years. You see, the thing is this. God shook the Roman Empire to the ground. He did. Christianity was one of the reasons that ultimately the Roman Empire fell. And it was through the expansion of the kingdom of God, through those people who decided, I'm going to the battlefield. I'm going out to war. I'm not going to stay in my comfort zone. And I'm not going to listen to the threats of the enemy. The emperor threatened Ignatius with death. And he goes, kill me. It will achieve more than if I live. Jesus said it this way. If a seed goes into the ground and dies, then there'll be great harvest. And the Lord is looking for that level of boldness from you and I. You know, 2 Kings 16, Elisha answered, Do not be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. We need our eyes to be opened so that when the threats of the enemy come against us, we go, this is no threat at all. Because the worst they can do is kill me, and that's gain, according to the Apostle Paul. We know where we're going and what's going to happen. But also, they always lose. And more are with us than those who are against us. We have to believe it. So the second set of keys is the blood of Jesus that saved us, that gave us a testimony. And you know, the thing is this, your testimony, when you speak it to someone else, becomes a prophetic word of that deliverance. Your testimony is a prophetic utterance of what God is going to do again. Why do you think we've got it on the screen, send us your testimonies? Because we want to broadcast them. We want to publish them. We don't want them so that we've simply got the warm and fuzzies to think we're doing something in this church. We're not doing anything. Jesus is. And we want to publish for everyone to see across social media, even if people get offended. Who cares? We want to say what God has done, what the goodness of God is doing. People's lives are being transformed, set free, healed, delivered. We want to publish it. That's why I want your video, your face, telling us yourself in your own words. No more than 30 seconds. What it is so that we can put it out there. And I'm going to land with this. Haggai 2. My spirit remains in your midst. Fear not. For thus says the Lord of hosts, yet once more in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I will shake all nations so that the treasures of all nations shall come in. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The writer of Hebrews quotes it. He says, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. This phrase, once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken. That is, things that have been made. In order that the things that cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, let us be grateful for receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. Is anyone grateful? 
that you're receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken. That you've been transferred out of the dominion of darkness into the kingdom that is unshakable of His beloved Son. That you've been given weapons and strategies to be deliberately offensive and run from your comfort zone into the battleground. Because here's the truth. The enemy's always a liar. The enemy's always a fake. He's a forgery. He hasn't had an original thought ever in his life. All he does is take the good that God creates and twist and perverts it and turns it into something else. When Elisha prophesied what happened, suddenly the sky was filled with chariots of fire. And tonight, we're going to stand and we're going to remind the devil, you might be trying to send out uh, chariots to scare us with your rumblings. But the Spirit of God says, the sky is full of my chariots of fire. Stand to your feet. Just lift your hands all across this room. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you that we are part of this immovable kingdom, God. We thank you that we are those who cannot be shaken, God. Lord, we thank you that anything that you are shaking in our lives is for our good, oh God. We thank you that you will shake us free from the prison, and you'll shake us free from every tactic of the enemy that has held us in bondage or kept us in the place of comfort, oh God. Lord, we want to be those who boldly run into the darkness, into the battlefield, carrying your light, carrying carrying your weapons, carrying the blood of Jesus and the testimony of our mouth, oh God. Lord, we thank you that you are the one who's truly shaking the heavens and the earth in this season, that the people of the earth might see that there is one God, that there is a Savior called Jesus Christ who is risen from the dead and seated on the throne and will one day come again. Oh God, I pray, Father God, that you would put a burning zeal on the inside of us, God, to confront the battle and destroy darkness everywhere we see it, oh God. Let us not be passive anymore, oh God. I pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, oh, you can do better than that. Give the Lord a shout tonight. I just want you to find someone to pray for. You're just going to lay hands on them and you're just going to break off timidity off them. You're going to break off them passivity. You're going to break off them the love of comfort zones. I'm going to come to you with that. Oh, that's the one. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, Rosalind. We'll do that in a second. What we're going to do first is take communion. (laughs) So slick. Now that this thing is behind me, it looks like you're all taking pictures of me. That's the Lord delivering of me of narcissism. The blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Why don't you just spend a moment just getting right with the Lord? David, where are you? Did you just, Vanessa, is it okay if David plays your new keys? (laughs) Vanessa's heart is being tested on day one. (laughs) It's like handing a newborn baby. To someone. If you need communion, just raise your hand and the stewards will bring you some communion elements. It's cool. The holy pad is coming. <clears throat> just ask the Lord if there's anyone that you need to forgive. The Apostle Paul said, anyone who takes this in an unworthy manner, he talks about that in the realm of unforgiveness. It is really important if we're asking the Lord to forgive us that we have gone through the business of forgiving others. Anyone who's annoyed you, irked you. Jesus.
So Jesus, we remember everything that you achieved for us on the cross. We thank you that the kingdom advances because of your sacrifice on the cross. We thank you that the price of our adoption, the price of our being transferred into your glorious kingdom was the price of our own body and blood. So we lift high the body and we say we're so grateful. And even now, Lord, as the scripture says, by your stripes we are healed. So, Father, even now as we take this, we believe that healing will break out all across this room, God, and online. And so we receive your body with great thanks. And Jesus, you said that we would overcome the accuser by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. And tonight we witness to the fact that you have saved us by your blood, that you've rescued us, oh God. And we decree and declare, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. Why don't you just decree that? Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. And again, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. And Jesus, we thank you that there is nothing more powerful than your blood, for the life is in the blood thank you. It's the seal of the covenant. I thank you that it is the indelible mark which proves your love and your commitment to us, O oh God. It proves that you will fight for us as we go out to battle, O oh God. Lord, as we go out to meet the enemy, God, victory is assured, O oh God. I thank you it's not a faint hope. I thank you it is a done deal. And so, Jesus, we say now, let every curse be broken. Let every demon flee. Let everything of darkness tremble and shake at the blood of Jesus. And we break off ourselves every accusing thought tonight in Jesus' name. tonight, like I said, I want you to find someone, just someone to bless. You're just going to pray 
break off them every intimidation of the enemy, every threat. Break off them any tendency to go into a comfort zone or to retreat from the battle. And just pray for the confidence and zeal of God to possess them uh, this week. Amen. It's great to see you. Those of you who've been joining online, thank you so much for being with us. We'll see you next week uh, for Tabernacle. Bring your friends. It's our time to establish the throne of God in a really deliberate way through an all-night prayer. Uh, 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 no, all night worship. There we go. That's it. So God bless you. We'll see you next week. Find someone to bless and to pray for on your way out. And if you're able to help.